Okay, uh, welcome to another Flax and Fiber Friday. Uh, this is a bag that I have, and I have more in my shed, of uh, churro, or a churro mix that I got from a elderly Navajo woman, way, or man, way out on the reservation uh, last year. So, it's pretty dirty, pretty funky. Um, I am just separating it loosely uh, to get ready for washing it. And there goes the rooster. And my cats are like, ooh, what's this stinky stuff? Um, so my plan is, Christmas is tomorrow, right? <laughs> Not really, but it feels like it's tomorrow. And uh, so I'm making a present for somebody. And it's kind of an experiment. Because uh, I have done some felting with the resist method so that you get like a container, like a basket or a hat or something like that. And um, so I'm gonna try and do a container. And most of this is not gonna be dyed because I don't wanna spend the amount of time and the amount of dye that would be necessary uh, for as much wool as I need to use. So, um, saving on resources. So the inside will be the color of the wool, and then the outside will be the colors that I will be working on. And so I will also be adding to this video the process, and hopefully it comes out. And if not, then you can see mistakes. <laughs> or failed attempts at, at artistic creativity. So I am going to fill this basket, laundry basket up because I know I'm going to need a lot. Um, the resist is, oh, maybe 40 inches by 12. So front and back covered in wool. So it's going to be a lot of wool. And if it works out, then I will make two. And... Um, it's for my daughter, and she I don't think she watches this channel, so hopefully she won't know. Um, so it's for one of my daughters, and then if it works out, then I'll make one for her husband, too, my son-in-law, um, for closet storage on the top shelf of store of closet. So there we go. I will just keep picking at this and separating it so it can clean well. I am not going to be combing it or anything because I've discovered that just takes hours and hours and while it helps a little bit, I'm not going for a really consistent thickness, so I'm going to be okay with some thin and thick spots. So there we go. There's a battle of the roosters. There's a rooster way over there. so. <laughs> They go, they have their little battles every day. <laughs> Is he going to answer? Yep, he answered. Okay, so I will be back when I, I think when I start dying. Um, or when I start laying it all out after I've died. So, dusty, dusty. Bryn just checking it out. Okay, see you in a few. Hey, I am back. Uh, I did do a video of making that particular container, uh, but it was so long and there were so many mistakes in the video that I figured I would kind of start at a different place because uh, I'm going to be making three containers. So today I'm starting on a smaller one that is uh, going to be a jewelry catch-all. Uh, my project, I think, came out pretty fun. So I have this contrasting material. This is wood uh, that it is stitched onto. There's doweling down in the bottom. I threw in a braid of wool that I had on hand. Uh, it's lumpy, but I kind of like that. 
It's very organic. And I also built it, designed it, so that I can flatten it down and ship it and she won't know what it is. So I'm excited about that. I also had some wire stump work sort of flowers from another project uh, that I didn't end up using or I used and then cut off that art project and they just happen to be the perfect colors. And then uh, handles made out of roving that I dyed with the Navajo tea. I am going to be doing a uh, writing tutorial that I will sell. Sorry, i got to make a living. Uh, for this container, uh, the other one that I will do for my son-in-law, since this came out good. And then the uh, small jewelry catch-all. I will show you. This is the wool that I've dyed uh, for my son-in-law's. And this is all acid dye that I have, because he likes blue. I didn't have any woad growing this year uh, for dye. And so I went ahead and dyed it all up. So this is actually just blue. I added some, oh, what's the name? Anyways, a kind of a green and chartreuse uh, acid dye. And so it, then I got this from the strength of the dye, and then some blue uh, from what was left over of the dye. And then I dyed some white flannel that came out lighter than this to be the lining. So that will be the next project. Uh, today we're just going to kind of go over, in addition to me having picked the wool clean, uh, my supplies. So I have a dog food bag here, and because I found my Sharpie washed off as soon as I wiped it, uh, I stripped down some duct tape and measured for where I want. And on this, instead of just one solid color on the top, I'm going to kind of do a transition where my corners will be of the bag. So I've marked where those will go. And the resist is just going to be around here. So it ends up come like just a circular, sort of like an infinity scarf. So I will lay the, the fiber out to here and then a little bit over the edge. I have my inspiration for colors is a uh, fabric that she had, a bunch of fabric she had, and gave me scraps like a while ago because she just wanted to clear out her stuff. Uh, and she loved this fabric. So I figured that's going to be the lining. So I went through wools that I already dyed um, for different experiments to find colors that um, I had already dyed up. And there's one more. Oh, there it is. Uh, from the churro wool. So I think those will be really nice on the outside. And her living room where she'll keep this is sort of blue and browns. And I'm also cheating because I'm going to use store-bought roving uh, that I have dyed. And then if I need more, I'll grab some more because this is store-bought, really inexpensive churro roving that I dyed up. And in addition, my daughter's middle name is Rose. Um, this is the rose hips that I found when I was in the forest. And it's not an awesome color, but I think it will have meaning, so I will put that in there. I also wanted to show you the difference between this resist and the one I used for the large container, which was um, 42 inches long. And then I think it was 13 or 13 and a half from here to here. So that was a lot of work and a lot of learning because it was just slapping that thing around. And so I was surprised and happy that it worked out as well as it did. So that was a successful kudos to me. Tap myself on the back. Uh, again, dog food bag. I have dogs, so I always have dog food bags. Uh, I For the... Um, plastic on either side while I'm working on it, I just took large, thin uh, 
lawn and garden bags that I had and cut those to use for the top and the bottom. I really prefer to uh, find what I have on hand um, and kind of make do with that. Usually when I've done wet belting, I just go with the, uh, the rubber drawer liner and that's what I'll do with this because it's a good, it's a size that will fit. And then I have just thin plastic that came in a, something I ordered. Uh, so I will use that in that. And if I need, I will use bubble wrap as well. But for my much larger one, I did not have bubble wrap big enough or the drawer liner that was big enough. So laying around, there was an old um, tarp covering canopy. Uh, and it's like, I don't know, it's like plastic. So it's got holes, but it's got a really good um, abrasion to it. So I used that for my super large piece. And I had just a piece of dowel uh, that's going to be perfect size for this one. And I, for my long roller, I did not, I was almost going to go to the dollar store and see if they had any more um, pool noodles. But I had a uh, piece of PVC pipe laying around. So this really worked well for the sides. So I am going to begin on the little box. And so that all my videos aren't too long, I believe this will be the end of part one of uh, doing the container boxes. And this bottom will be different than the one I already finished, as will my son-in-law's. That will be a, a different design. Uh, this is going to have support wires that are actually coat hangers. And so my instructions, my tutorials that I'll put up um, are going to be three different designs and you'll be able to essentially come out with your own size, use your own size, whatever you end up getting. Uh, the box that I, the container that I did make did not end up being as tall as I wanted. Uh, I wanted 10 inches and I think that came out to seven, but it's still a good size. So I'm happy with that. So that is it for now.